Hello and welcome to the David Watson opinion again and just very briefly really I was just going to talk about Eddie Hall 4 last night what I think of the AJ Joyce footage and also Martin Ford coming up against the Iranian Hulk which is coming soon so I think the most frustrating thing about last night's fight was the bloody streaming service because it just kept crashing so I pretty much missed the first two rounds where according to what I can see on the comments um, it, everyone says yeah Eddie gave a good account of himself for the first couple of rounds I did manage to catch little glimpses of it like I seen I did see Eddie uh, put it on four and get him up against the ropes um, and I haven't bothered re-watching the fight because I know the result and I watched the last four rounds but if I'm being honest fair play to both of them be getting in the ring first and foremost. You know, we all can be armchair critics, me especially. And he took a couple, he took some good punches off four, um, off four. And, you know, he got knocked off his feet a couple of times and got up, got cut. But to be honest, the, like I said, the thing that really pissed me off about the fight was the appalling streaming service. You know, it, it you... It, it was just frustrating, you know, and I'm glad I didn't pay for it. I'll put it that way. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But there's, I seen somebody make a comment that, you know, when a service is that bad and you get it for free, but you still feel like you've been ripped off. I was like, yeah, that that's pretty much it. That sums it up perfectly well for me. And I've got to also be honest as well. Congrats to four. He boxed a good box boxing match. And he looked like he could box. I don't know what Eddie's game plan was. I don't know what Eddie's training has been. They both have lost a lot of weight. They both looked in great condition. But Eddie didn't look like he had any boxing fundamentals. No basic footwork. No jab. It was just all trying to throw a big punch. And I'm not, I'm not going to say he let himself down. But I honestly believe if... If I was about to say Mike Tyson, but you know, like almost a Tyson style of his hands up and just kind of move in and out, he could have actually boxed four and had a different outcome. I'm not saying he would have beaten four, I'm not, you know, four. I said in an earlier video it would come down to who was happy to take a punch, and to what they both they both took punches and punches off guys that big, it's got fucking hurt. It's just got to. So I take respect off to both of them. But I do think in terms of whatever Eddie's boxing plan was and what his training was, look, it just didn't seem to have any fundamentals. So I, I'm not going to... I think it's too harsh to say he let himself down because he, he got hit in the face a few times and went down and he did catch four a couple of times. But in terms of boxing preparation, it didn't appear to have any. And I don't mean training. I mean actually preparing and sparring properly and having a game plan. There was no use of the jab, no body shots or anything like that. And with that long reach and height difference, Eddie's only real way in was going to be through a jab and slipping under Ford's jab. There's me rolling my head like that. But do you know what? It's over now. I hope they can settle their differences. I was interested in seeing Martin Ford ringside talking about the Iranian Hulk and whoever else. That'll be interesting just because they're bloody giants and there's something funny about watching these guys because they're big. I mean, you think heavyweight boxers are big and you think bodybuilders, heavyweight bodybuilders are big. But then you see these like strongman giants and you're like, Jesus Christ, that's big they are units huge units so i think anytime those guys get in and box is it's just funny it's entertaining it is what it is it's entertaining but martin ford and the iranian hulk i wish you both good luck and then finally my comments on and my opinion on footage of joe joyce sparring with anthony joshua from what I understand and from what I've seen of it, and I've watched a few clips of it now, it was a long time ago. 
both when they were amateurs. And to be honest, I've seen this a lot and I can't remember who it was. I'm sure it was in the 90s that I've seen it. And I apologize because I cannot remain, remember the name of either fighter. But one guy was a world champion and he was going up against a former sparring partner. And this sparring partner just kept talking about how he had sparred, sparred successfully, and basically he had his number. And he and the world champion knew he had his number. And the world champion just shrugged his shoulders and said, look, when I'm sparring with guys, I'm sparring to learn something. I'm sparring to do this. I'm sparring to do that. It's not the same as an actual fight. Of course, lo and behold, they get in the ring and the world champion showed his former Spartan sparring partner, why he was world champion and annihilated him. And over, over the years in boxing history, I've heard this a lot where people go on about sparring sessions and typically sparring sessions happen at different times in people's careers. And after those sparring sessions, they progress differently, go down different paths, different journeys. And a lot of boxing is about you catching that guy when you're at your peak and he is off his peak or she is off their peak. That's why they talk about matchmaking. It's about getting them at the right time because if you chuck yourself in too early, you're going to get found out. If he takes you on or she takes you on too late in your career, you're going to get found out. It, it, that's how it works. Very rarely do you get too great fighters or just two equal fighters at equal stages of the career you know it's it's always about you know like you if you listen to boxers you'll often hear them say i'm two fights away from that three fights away from that and what they also mean is i want that guy to have two or three more fights before i'm ready for them and and that's how i look at that joyce joe joyce and anthony joshua sparring session you, you don't know what Joe Joyce was up to. You don't know what Anthony Joshua was up to. You don't know the reasons for their sparring. You don't know what they were trying to achieve. You don't, there's no reference to what levels of their careers they were at. And it was clearly a few years ago. Both have gone on different journeys now. Both have fought much, much different opponents. Anthony Joshua has been in with some world-class, high-caliber opponents. But twice now he's also been exposed. And I'm a fanboy for Anthony Joshua. I am. I actually do think he's the most underrated of the world champions. And people are always going banging. And I know people are always banging on about him being overrated. And I don't think he's overrated at all. He's a massive physical specimen of an athlete. And he's an OK boxer. A good, an OK to good boxer. You know, what he is for me is a more, more impressive athlete who can box and is learning to box still. But there's flaws in his style. So it's not difficult to put Anthony Joshua up against somebody that can box better than him. Not at world level. At world class level. And that's what you've seen with Usyk. Um, you know, and you've seen his inexperience a little bit against... Um, Andy Ruiz and you also seen what happens like when he fought Joseph Parker and Joseph Parker was just a little bit too cute at times and Anthony Joshua sort of I think knew that that uh, that he'd have to be careful and so when that happens you get a very different Anthony Joshua but in terms of being an athletic specimen I think he's an amazing athlete and that carries him through his career where perhaps his boxing his technical boxing skill doesn't but he's not at the same time he's not a slugger like say a Dillian White or a Derek Chisora he's not in that frame and Joe Joyce if I was going to tell Joe Joyce to do anything bear in mind he's not going to listen to anything I say I'd tell him to study the style of Lennox Lewis because Lennox Lewis I remember seeing an interview with him and he was talking about what Emmanuel Stewart had taught him and that is you have natural attributes. Lennox Lewis's natural attributes was his left jab. You have a great jab. Use it. Train it. And you look at a lot of Lennox's Lewis, uh, work once Emmanuel Stewart took over. All done from the jab. Just jab, 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 
and then throw the right. And on top of that, Lennox was a great fighter, a good boxer, good foundations. And that's what I would be, you know, that's to me is the difference between Joe Joyce and Anthony Joshua. Joe Joyce has a potential to be a Len, uh, Lennox Lewis style boxer. Phenomenal jab, great right. Anthony Joshua is kind of, for me, a mixture of a great athlete who needs to be much more adaptive to his opponent. So like Lennox Lewis could just stick to what he did no matter who he went up against and use his advantages to, to his advantage. Whereas the downfall for me with Anthony Joshua is that sometimes, like when he went up against Usyk, he just tried to be a better boxer than him. And you, you're not you're not a better boxer than him. And you were never going to be a better boxer than Usyk. But you were a bigger, stronger guy and you could have been much more physical about it and much more like Derek Chisora or maybe a Dillian White would have been. And and that's where I feel, in my opinion, that Anthony Joshua gets it wrong sometimes. Not whether or not he's the greatest or the not the greatest. You showed what he could do against Ruiz off the back of a loss. So I think people who are, um, are saying his career is over and that if he gets another shot at Usyk, I don't underestimate him. I think the biggest problem with Anthony Joshua, like I said, is he tried to outbox Usyk and you, you, he just isn't good enough for that. And if it had been athletic against Usyk, Usyk would have discovered just how strong and athletic Anthony Joshua is. And while I'm there, I may as well actually give my verdict on Dillian White or Tyson Fury. And I'm going to put it out, I'm going to say it, I actually fancy Dillian White's chances. And, here, and here's why, and bear with me. Do I think Tyson Fury is the best heavyweight in the world? Yeah, I do. I don't think there's a guy technically that can touch him. But I also think he's not... I'll be very surprised if he's going to knock Dillian White out. Because I don't care what anyone says about Wilder. Wilder was a one-trick pony. And all Tyson Fury did was expose him. Dillian White can bang. And I actually don't think Deontay Wilder is the phenomenal puncher that people say he is. And the reason I say that is because if you look at his list of opponents, they were never that world-class. And it's, it's much easier to hit lower caliber opponents. And he struggled against them at times. So I do think that it's an easy, a very easy point win for Tyson Fury. And I don't mean easy as in he won't know he's had a fight with Dillian White. But I think in terms of a point win, yeah, I think he, it's an, you know, he, he can get a point win against Dillian White all day long. No problem at all, all day long. But I fancy Dillian White's chances as a banger. Dillian White has gone silent, I think, because he's training hard. And I think he's up for this and, he, and he's really, really motivated. And I'm not convinced that Tyson is that motivated for it. And I think that could play into Dillian's hands. And I fancy Dillian chopping Tyson a few times in the body. And as good as Tyson Fury is, and I do, I'm going to say it again, I do think he's the best heavyweight on the planet. If you can't be bothered to fight, you can't be bothered. You can't motivate yourself when you're not into it. Look at every Premier League team that gets knocked out by minnows for the FA Cup. Because they just turn up and they can't find third, fourth, fifth, sixth gear. It's just not there for them. They just mentally, they can't do it. You know, and boxing is littered with with that, such events. So, but I wish them luck. It'll be an interesting fight. And yeah, I'm going to say it now. Tyson on points or Dillian White by stoppage. Let me know your opinion.